intermolecular forces. Um, so a couple of things we need to recall is that solids have intermolecular forces that are strong enough to lock the molecules in place. Um, so they have lots of order or organization in the solids. Um, in the, in, a, in uh, the same substance, but in a liquid state, the, intermolec the intermolecular attractive forces um, are strong enough to hold the molecules close together, but not with a lot of order. So they are actually able to move around a bit. Then that same substance in a gaseous state is going to have far more average uh, kinetic energy than the attractive forces, which is going to allow the particles to get extremely uh, far apart, and there's going to be zero order. order. <clears throat> Um, so here is an image of, let's say, some substance X where it is in the gaseous state versus cooled a bit in the liquid state versus cooled a bit more to where it's in a uh, solid state. And this one more, uh, particularly would be crystalline. And crystalline just means it's very rigid, geometrically organized versus being kind of frozen in an order that maybe looks like this. So if we were to solidify the liquid and the particles were kind of disorganized, looking like this, but not moving place, we would actually call that an amorphous solid. Um, so what you need to know about intermolecular forces is that they are attractive forces between atoms or molecules. Just for simplicity, we're just going to say that it is um, attractive forces between particles. So it can be between um, different individual atoms like argon, which exists as an atom um, because it does not bond to any other um, particle, so it exists as a single atom, or maybe among molecules like water molecules. Each individual water molecule we would call a particle. Um, intermolecular forces are generally weaker, so we consider these forces, they are not extremely strong forces, and they are definitely weaker than when you consider um, the intramolecular force that is ionic or covalent, these forces actually hold particles um, together um, versus holding in different particles together. So for example, covalent bonds hold the water molecule together, whereas intermolecular forces hold different water molecules together. Intermolecular forces and kinetic energy are what determine whether or not a substance is going to be in a solid, uh, liquid, or gaseous state. So there are three general types of intermolecular forces, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, and London dispersion forces. Now these forces right here, London dispersion, are only found um, in those non-polar molecules. And this is actually found in DNA, which is a very large molecule that's non-polar. Uh, has London dispersion forces that holds and um, stabilizes the molecule. Um, and geckos, those little lizards that climb walls, are, are actually using London dispersion forces um, in order to adhere to the wall and, and climb up the wall. So let's talk first about dipole-dipole forces. In order to have a dipole-dipole force, you have to have two dipole particles. So think about a polar molecule attracted to another polar molecule. Um, these are forces of attraction are going to occur between the oppositely charged end of the polar molecules. And uh, the strength of the dipole-dipole force is going to depend on the polarity, just how polar the molecule is. So if we look here, we've got a polar molecule, sulfur dioxide, um, and there is an attractive force. The intermolecular force of dipole-dipole is between the somewhat negative end of sulfur dioxide to the other positive end of a different sulfur di dioxide molecule. So dipole-dipole is referring to the interaction between the oppositely charged poles of two different polar molecules. Another example of that here 
or you can see this one is a solid CH3CN, and then we've got liquid CH3CN, um, where we've got these attractive forces here in the solid state, lots of attractive dipole-dipole forces. Um, but once it becomes liquefied and those particles move around a bit more, now we can run into some repulsive forces when two of the same uh, charged ends come into contact with, the, with each other, like two north ends of two different magnets. There's going to be repulsion there. Now, hydrogen bonding is specifically occurs only in molecules which have hydrogen and it is bonded to to a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. However, the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen or nitrogen and fluorine is not the hydrogen bond. This is what is required to have hydrogen bonding in the substance. What happens is the hydrogen of one of the molecules is attracted to the nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine of the other molecule. So an image of that is here. Um, again, you can see basically a dipole-dipole interaction. It's just a very specific and strong dipole-dipole interaction that occurs between the hydrogen of one molecule and the fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen of another molecule. So it is just a specific kind of dipole-dipole interaction. Now, London dispersion forces, these weak um, intermolecular forces occur in particles that are nonpolar. Of course, it can occur in any particle, but it is the only force of attraction between particles that are not polar. What happens is the electrons um, are momentarily uh, lopsided on the molecule. The molecule is originally nonpolar. The, the electrons end up collected to to one side of the molecule, making that side temporarily ne partially negative and the other side of the molecule temporarily partially positive. Um, and that causes, so a temporary, it's almost like a temporary dipole. So this molecule is not polar, but because the electrons have shifted for a moment to this far side, then this side is temporarily negatively charged. This side is temporarily positively charged. And so because it has the positive and negative side, we can have interaction between molecules. So here is another example of a very large molecule, which would have lots of electrons available. If, if we say that the electrons are temporarily shifted or more dense um, or around this side of the molecule, that side becomes partially negative for a moment, and this side becomes partially positive, which can basically take um, the another molecule, which was at the original uh, moment at time zero was um, not dipole, so it did not have a, an uneven dispersion, but it can actually kind of cause a dispersion. So the pause, the negative end here can force the electrons that were here over, and once they get forced are over, this side of the molecule becomes temporarily negative, and that side becomes temporarily positive. So we have this attraction now which again is momentary, that occurs between these two molecules, which were otherwise not polar. So a temporary dipole is where you have all the electrons temporarily shifted to one side of a nonpolar molecule, um, which causes it to be temporarily charged on each end, a positive, sorry, a negative side and a positive side. Here is another image which shows um, different um, interactions between nonpolar molecules, um, induces some polarity, which um, can cause interactions. Um, another thing to note is that as the mass of the nonpolar particle increases, that means the number of electrons is increasing. And since the number of electrons is essentially the reason for London dispersion and those being lopsided um, on one side of the molecule, we're going to see 
more London dispersion possible in, in butane than we would in methane simply because in butane has a significantly higher amount of electrons. And the more the electrons that are available, the bigger that temporary dipole can actually be. Another image um, looking at some London dispersion forces where we temporarily um, have nonpolar particles which then become polar um, and then can induce polarity on other nonpolar particles. In an ion dipole interaction, you have an ion like chlorine from table salt dissolved in water, which is exactly what we're seeing here, where we've got water and we've got the different um, the cation and the anion from table salt, which has been dissolved in the water. How does that happen? Well, water having that partially positive and partially negative end um, orients itself um, to the anion and the cation. So there is an interaction between the chlorine, which is negatively charged, and the positive side of water versus the sodium, which is positively charged, um, interacting with the more partially negative side of water. So what are the effects of intermolecular forces on properties? The more intermolecular forces that are available, um, the, there is going to be an increase in things, part, properties such as boiling points. So intermolecular forces and kinetic energy of molecules are what are going to determine whether it is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and um, the amount of energy required to get it to go from being a solid to a liquid to a gas, depending on the amount of intermolecular forces available. The more intermolecular forces available, the higher the boiling point, for example. Now, if we look at this image here, we can see a needle floating on top of some water. Why does this happen? Well, this happens because water is a polar molecule. And so there is a lot of attraction between the water molecules which would allow a buildup of surface tension. And that surface tension is preventing the needle from breaking through the surface and falling into the water.